He also played it. I can't remember if it was Summer Split or Spring Split that he played it. It was one of the I'm two. I'm pretty sure it was Summer, and uh, he lost on it. He did lose on it quite dramatically as well. It was not a <laughs> it good game. It was an awful performance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let's have a look. See, of course, uh, in terms of expectations, things like the Camille are a great answer. The blind pick Oriana is a little surprising this early on in the draft, especially when you imagine that Tank would like to grab himself the Syndra, a big comfort pick for him. And uh, all right, it looks like that we are going to go with a little bit more of a standard draft. Double AP in the mid jungle from the side of Rogue. We've seen inspired with a fair amount of Lilia games under his belt. And we'll see how he does in this matchup. On the uh, side of PSG, they'll be looking to team up this Ornn with something that de deals a lot of damage from the jungle. Graves, River's second most popular pick across the course of Worlds. And there is the Syndra as well. So we have highest comfort for Tank, yep. second highest comfort for River. So PSG is just kind of getting everything they want. There's the Aurelia. Boom. Got the prediction. Happy about that one. Good job, Eddie. Finn, he was known, for those that don't know, as an Aurelia one trick. This was the champion that he perma spammed. Uh, before he became a pro player, and he is an expert in it. I spoke to him about this champion for my picks to watch, and he was the person that gave me so much information on it. So very excited to see him on that. He is going to be playing into... Uh, actually, I think that it's quite good, especially into like low-range champions like the Graves. I think that it's also easy to set up stuns against things like the... Um, uh, Syndra, and I think that it can offer a lot of team fight power. The thing that Rogue really need now is a frontline, something like a Nola, something like a Leona, something that can act as an engage for the other carries to be able to follow up on. Of course, we have seen Irelia only once so far at Worlds Groups, 100% win rate. Bin played it against uh, yes. Machi Esports, so we've got Finn and Bin. <laughs> Maybe yeah. that's the thing. Maybe you can only play Irelia if your rhyme name's within. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, with the Alistair ban and the Twitch ban. You're kind of pinching the ball here for Unified and Kaiwing in the bottom lane. Pantheon removed. I'd love to see, as you say, something like the Nautilus Leon Leona taken away here by PSG as well. Just try and get rid of some of those tank engaged supports because, as you said, it's kind of what Rogue are missing as part of their composition. Direction right now. It's pretty interesting that we've been seeing so much bot left for the second half of draft, especially when you contrast that to summer where bot lane was like the first pick. Yeah. You know, like it was Ash almost insta locked in, Senna, Caitlyn. Before that, we had like Varus was insta locked. Yeah, like for a lot of summer, for pretty much everywhere, it's been a high priority. Aphelios. Of course, over in the LPL, they've been prioritizing a lot of things like jungle top matchups yeah. as well. And like that's kind of where the shift started as we came into Worlds, bot lane clearly became less of a priority and more of a counter matchup. So usually you would blind pick something like uh, an Ash or a Senna hit, which is exactly what Rogue is going to do. And then they'll look to try and counter pick the support. Yes, you have a few different options as to what they want to do. Aphelios instantly locked by Unified alongside the Thresh. Hey. Ooh, I like this lane. I like this lane a lot. So I think that Aphelios is quite good into short range champions. And when you think about like Irelia plus Lilia, both of them want to try and close that gap on you. Of course, one of the big risks of Aphelios is in the early game, he often struggles. And I think that against a Senna and an Orianna, who both, you know, well, I suppose you could argue that Orianna is actually relatively short range. Oh, bro. Okay. So, okay. So the thing about Braum is I understand in the context of why you would pick it versus the Orn because it then mitigates PSG's ability to engage. However, Rogue now lack an ability to engage a yep. fight. What you're kind of relying on is inspired to like maybe get a flank off, maybe land a bit of damage, throw the sleep out, and then you use that as an opportunity to actually start the fight. Um, but outside of that, it's very difficult to actually get things going. Meanwhile, for PSG, of course, they do have the Orn ultimate, but assuming that Braum doesn't waste the shield on anything, that then gets mitigated. So we might have a lot of weird, awkward standoffs. <laughs> Both teams trying to look for picks, look for those opportunities to try and force that engage off a single target. Um, but yeah, with a lot of the... Uh, a lot of limited engage tools uh, coming from both sides because of the Braum specifically. Um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about the lane matchups when we get into the game. But I am very excited to see Finn on his Irelia in the top lane. I think that this is uh, definitely going to be a fun one for him. I think it's going to be a fun game for both teams. Of course, both sitting at one and four right now in the group stage. Both eliminated from contention for the quarterfinals, but PSG have already shown us just because they're out for the count doesn't mean they are done fighting as they took down JDG in our last game. And it's for the Pickums video.
It's four. So the Pickums. Wait, where do you have Rogue? I have third. Rogue. I have third as well. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. But, you know, I know a lot of people uh, thought the Rogue would just crash and burn. So it's there's true. a lot of PSG fans out there that think that uh, Rogue should be at the bottom. It's like there's a lot of weight on this game. Pickums are, of course, important. I'm curious as to how the Pickums rate will change because I felt like that this, from many's perspective, this group was kind of set in stone from the from the get-go. You know, this I think was... top two was like solid. Yes. And then three, four was the little bit more tentative. Suggestion. Yes. So uh, it's uh, it's going to be interesting how the Pickums does in fact change after the results of Group B. Only two games left, and then of course we do have Group C tomorrow. Yep. I think. C and tomorrow, then, and then D the day after. The day after. So it's going to be an action-packed weekend. Group C of course looking very close. It is the weekend, isn't it? I'll be like I tweeted at the start of Worlds. From now on there's no days of the week. Yeah. There's Worlds days and non-Worlds days yes. and I've just remembered it's Friday today. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. I need to go out and do my groceries cuz shops close on Sunday. Yes. And then I'll have all of the food to watch Worlds over the weekend. Great. Uh yeah, tomorrow's going to be a good day. Uh, Sunday, I think, is also going to be an interesting one because the great thing about week two is a lot of upsets do, in fact, happen. Yes. Um, and of course, we are waiting to get into the game. That's why we're kind of talking about some of the other stuff. But uh, I'm very excited to see, like, how long the Fnatic week two thing will last because, like, there has to be a year where it doesn't come to fruition, yep. right? And also, <laughs> like, it's not really week two this time. Like, they played at the start of this week. It's, it's five days yeah. later. You know, I think that there's a weird gray area where, like, somehow EU week? fans will decide, <laughs> like, The weekend's what week. on Wednesday, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll find a way. Don't worry about it. Um, we yeah, anyway, we're, we're going to be jumping into the game very, very soon. Of course, just to remind people, in terms of stakes, there's not a huge amount on the line for both these teams. Uh, they are just playing for pride at this point. Uh, and of course, our last game of the day will be JDG versus Dan One. Uh, because of JDG's loss over to PSG, uh, they can no longer fight for first. Yep. Even if JDG do in fact win that game, they will just not have enough wins on yep. the board. Because Dan One have five wins, yes. JDG only have three right now. There's one game left to play. Correct. That is some quick maths for you as we jump onto Summoner's Rift for our penultimate game of the day. Already some pings coming out from Rogue. Looks like they're going to spread out for the level one. But I do see Inspired just uh, trying to gain control over his Razorbeaks. Right, so I think an early ward came down from... Oh, I thought an early ward came down from Finn, and then he was going to go to reset. What shenanigans have we got going on in the early game? There's I, that I ward. care more about the emote game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we've got Angry Cat versus the Mole Diver. <laughs> Who's going to win? So look at this. Look at this from Finn. This is actually um, quite uncommon for top laners. Uh, normally, you'll see this play come out from a jungler because an early sweeper is a lot more valuable for a jungler than the uh, the early wards are. So the fact that Finn has already chosen to drop his ward and then go for the sweeper, I'm interested as to what this will result in as the game progresses because not having that vision up towards the top side of the map could be very dangerous for him as Rogue is setting up for the delayed invade. There's a ward here that will spot them out and they spot it out as well. So tiny bit of XP, tiny bit of gold goes over to Rogue. They will ward up with this red buff. And of course, Lilia, when she does jungle camps, likes to start on the Razor Beak. So it's pretty good AOE, can take them pretty easily. Then we'll turn her attention over to the red. We'll see where River goes. He's currently sitting on his own blue buff, but a red invade makes the most sense. So it looks like in the bot lane as well, uh, Kai Wing got ahead of the wave, kind of stacked it up a little bit, and now got it to push towards him, which means that Unified and Kai Wing not going to go for that early push, but they may be able to deny some early farm. Meanwhile, Ooh. Graves doesn't actually get spotted going over the wall. So they don't confirm where exactly River is, but they should be able to make the assumption that he is up towards the top side of the map and stealing away that red buff as Inspired is looking to do the same. But Kai Wing and Unified, they have to be careful, of course, they are playing on the weak side of the map. They will not have that jungle assistance as Inspired makes his way into the mid lane. Yeah, just gonna run straight through there. I actually wonder if Inspired went straight towards his red, thinking that River wasn't gonna be here and immediately face checks into the buckshot coming out from that Graves. Inspired forced away, has to flash the Scatter of the Week coming out as well, but Tank doesn't quite have the Dark Sphere up in time. Good stuff coming out from Tank and River. Good punish onto Inspired. We'll get his flash out. And as Riley said, it seems that they trusted the information on that ward quite a lot. And they ended up getting punished for it. So good stuff in the early game once again from PSG. Which means that now the map is definitely going to be split. And Finn has to be even more careful because he has zero wards on the top side of the map. PSG should have the information required to ascertain this. May even look for an early gank up towards the top lane. Meanwhile, the bot lane going to be forced to play a little bit more defensively underneath the tower, as you would often expect from Nefelios in the early game. 
Only has the Severum Calibrum combo right now, so he's just going to be able to sustain off the waves. And uh, every now and again, try and get some poke harass down onto Han Summer and Vanda. I did check, Unified went 6-0 and on Aphelios during the PCS, so it's a very experienced uh, player on the champion. Of course, I think a lot of AD Carry's numbers were bolstered by Aphelios uh, with how powerful he was when he I came mean, out. In uh, Summer, I think Han Summer had, what, 10, 11 games on the champion? I like, he, he, it was one of his most played by far. He had, like, 10, 11 uh, on Aphelios, and then his next one was, like, 2. Uh, so I think that you've got two very experienced Aphelios players on either side. And uh, for now, Unified will have the CS advantage. Of course, you can see the wave slowly pushing back in their favor. As so Hansan looks to get a little bit of poke off on the back end. So the only real discrepancy is actually starting to develop in mid lane. Tank actually doing very well in the 1v1 matchup, punishing the Orianna, as you would kind of expect in this one versus one, which is why I was quite surprised by the early priority on the Orianna pick. But uh, Tank going to use that to get a bit of an early item advantage. Sorry, early, I don't know, early CS advantage, and then both mid laners invest in their TPs. I mean, it does have a slight item advantage as well. I'd take a Corrupting Potion, Dark Seal, Doran's Ring over double Doran's uh, in that lane. You can just harass a lot more, and you get a bit of extra mana out of the Corrupting Potion. Costs a little bit more overall as well. So, slight lead for Tank, as you say, in the mid lane. And while we continue to watch the bot, we see Unified. As soon as you get the Infernum up, it's a lot easier to push out these lanes, Redius. A lot easier to match, match the pressure that Senna was putting under. And of course, Senna. Not the best wave clear AD carry in the world early on. As Larson gets chunked out once again. Tank just dodging around with the phase rush. Both mid laners running it. Very speedy and of course with so many skill shots being thrown out, that little bit extra movement speed you can get can really affect the way a trade goes. Tank doing a really good job. Remember that he did in fact solo kill Showmaker earlier in the day. Now we see Finn. He did get the tower aggro. Yeah, he takes it. Hanabi's gonna fall. Finn flashes away. One more shot will hit him, but he just survives. River dives in. And a shotgun to the back of the Aurelia is the first kill for PSG. So, a bit of an execution error there for Rogue, because it ends up going one for one. And it's unfortunate that Finn doesn't actually get that kill. He would have loved it on the Aurelia, but now Larson actually within kill range in the mid lane as well. That's a bit of an all-end of the bot. Larson Brace heading on to Unified. Gusta Blow's going to come out as well. They're trying to get past Kai Wing with a good play. He's going to lock them in place. Hans Summer caught out just a bit as well as the damage turns back around for Unified here. As you said, the Infernum could do so much work. What? Well, I also think the minions really helped PSG in that one. There was a huge minion discrepancy uh, that really helped PSG kind of turn that extended skirmish over in their favor. A couple of summoner spells were burnt, of course. Both heal and ignite spent from the PSG duo in the bot lane, along with the exhaust from Vanda. So I think Rogue ultimately came out ahead in this trade, but Unified will be able to get an early base, likely going to grab up that BF sword. As we can see, Finn hitting that level six as the wave actually, I think, should push towards him with that cannon minion. So, Hanabi has to be very careful, especially at the level disadvantage that he's at, because Finn will definitely look for an all in if he can find it. I love the balance that we have in the top lane. It's kind of Bramble Vest into Vampiric Scepter. Finn's trying to out life steal the damage that he takes from the little tick from the Bramble Vest. As we see the rest of Rogue trying to get up towards the top lane. And Inspire's just going to take the Scuttle Crab here. We'll get a lot of extra mana back off that. Hanabi does still have the flash. Spire did pop a swell seed over the wall there, but because PSG know where he is, River's going to be able to secure the first dragon of the game. And once again, it's a relatively early Drake here, Vedius, for PSG. Seven minutes on the clock. Certainly is the case. You can see that mid lane discrepancy really starting to build. Larson coming up to the top river to assist his jungler. It means he's going to fall even further behind. Huge credit to Tank in this 1v1 matchup. He's consistently showcased in this tournament how talented he is on the Syndra. And giving that comfort over to him, I think uh, could prove detrimental over to Rogue as Hanabi has spotted out. Here we see a bit of action in the mid lane. Yeah, Tank has to flash away. But as you said, I, I do want to just highlight how well Tank's played together that day. He 1v1 killed Showmaker. Yep. He then really destroyed Yagao in the last game as well in the mid lane, had two kill advantage. And now against Larson, who was actually Rogue's best player in the first week of World's Groups, and even in the LEC, is uh, at a CS advantage, about 20 farm ahead, only the seven and a half minute mark ready. He's doing a really good job, he lands the stun. Larson has no mana, he's got nothing. Like, tanks just sustained mana, unleashed power, Larson's gonna have to back, doesn't have the teleport, this is domination in the mid lane for Tank, and it looks like Larson will stay around as Tank did just shove in the wave as quickly as he could. It's River in bot lane. River's coming down on Summer. Gonna pop the Curse of the Black Mist. We'll be able to get away with the Flash. 
and with the heels. A double of summoners burnt there for the rogue bottom lane. So I think this early game is going extremely well for PSG so yeah. far. The bot lane has not really been punished that much when arguably Aphelios uh, that should really be his weakness point that you try to exploit, try to look for dives. Uh, the top lane, what could have been a strong early advantage for Finn, the dive didn't go the way that they wanted, which means that he's still sitting out of death. And while he is working towards that blade of the Ring King, he's not that much further ahead of the Orn, who's going to offer so much more team for value later on into the game. So I think that PSG's comp is only going to continue to get stronger as the game progresses. And the fact that they're kind of continuing to play their style of taking things slow and steady is exactly how they were able to get that big win against JDG just last game. I love their neutral objective control. Like, they've already taken a dragon. I thought they were going to start the Rift Herald here. Instead, decide to back away. Didn't really know where all of Rogue were on the map, so Finn's going to come down. So he's pushed the wave in on the top lane. But you can see PSG already swapping. Right, Unified's on his way towards top. Kai Wing's already up here as well, so PSG will be looking for that Rift Herald. And if they can take it early enough, of course, you can use it to batter down those plates and funnel more gold into your Felios or into your Syndra and get them towards that first item power point. Interestingly, Rogue has brought their bot lane up. They have five members on the top side. Finn does have TP, so he can use it to catch that bot wave. Well, let's see exactly what Rogue decide to do here with the Rift Herald that they're going to grab for themselves. TP going to come through from Finn, so he is going to actually collect that bot wave. No action going to come off the back of that. All right. It's a pretty good response overall from Rogue to be able to secure that objective. They're at the back oh, of the hook. Oh, there is the hook, and there goes Hunt Summer. PSG just waiting in a bush, lying in wait, and they strike on Hunt. And there's the action that we were waiting for. Really good pick coming out from PSG. They were able to punish, and as you rightly said, get that kill. Unfortunately, the kill didn't go over to Unified, but he's going to get a lot of plates off the back of this. And you can see that with the Chakrams, he just melts through this tower. Big early advantage gain for PSG. Once again, they go out to an early lead, and we have seen already how solid they can be from this sort of position, how clinical they can be, Vedius. Against JDG, all it took was a few kills in the early game, and JDG just couldn't fight against the dragon stacking that came out from PSG. Once again, they've got an early Drake. They have a Fed Graves, and they have a 28 CS lead on their AD carry as well, Vedius. They've also got a uh, 28 CS lead on the mid lane as well. Yep. Uh, everything going well for the solo laners of PSG. And sure, Hanabi, while it may be a little bit behind in farm, it doesn't really matter. On the horn, your value comes much later into the game. Staying relevant in terms of XP is probably much more valuable. And notice that Kai Wing is hovering around. Potential cross map play going to be denied, even though Rogue are not looking for it. There is no real option for them. So, really good stuff from PSG. Really turning it on today. I think that they gave Damwon a pretty competitive game as well. And uh, As much as you can give Damwon a competitive game right now. Sure, that's definitely true. But yeah, they're really turning up in week two, unfortunately, because of how difficult uh, it was always going to be. Yeah. Going 0-3 uh, in the very first week was always going to be a tough mountain to climb. But good to see that they can still compete and kind of show up here in week two. I just think it's a really difficult group overall as well, right? Like, taking games consistently off Dam 1 and J JDG is always going to be tough. And uh, PSG suffered the wrath, perhaps, a little bit of uh, getting second in their region. I think it's also very important as well because uh, when we look about the context of the PCS, obviously, like, they haven't had the strongest tournament, but when we look at how PSG did, the fact that they did have subs, the fact that they dominated the play-in stage, I think that coming into week two and the fact that even in week one, they were kind of glimmers of hope multiple yeah. times, like, they demonstrated that as a region, they can compete. And uh, while they haven't had the best showing at the World Championship, there's definitely still more opportunities in the future with some of the talent that they have on this roster. I think that, you know, we've already highlighted Tank, but I think he continues to have dominant performance on this Syndra. And I'm going to continue watching him throughout the rest of this game because 12 minutes in, 120 farm, very close to completing that. What is likely to be Luden's Echo first item. And uh, yeah, PSG continuing to look dominant as they secure their second Drake of the game. It's a mountain soul. So not the most impactful in the world. Of course, the shield helping you out, and Orn will be very happy to get all of that extra armor and magic resist. Rift Herald was used here in the top lane. That gold's going to be funneled onto Hun Summer. But meanwhile, PSG are all just pushing in at the bottom lane. You can see Unified and Hanabi have actually teamed up as Hun Summer gets the bonk and gets the plate. And Unified will be trying to match that in the bottom lane. Proxy farming, cosplaying a singed just a little bit. But uh, he should just be able to get back to this wave. And Finn maybe overstayed a little bit here, perhaps thinking that Hanabi had left. Temple's going to come out. Finn dodges away with the blade search, and now he's going to try and turn it back on the Orn. 
dives in, and there's Glacial Fisher as well, but there's already four members of PSG here, and they try and turn it back around. Finn already down. PSG collapse in the bottom lane. Definitely a greedy play there from Finn that is rightly punished from PSG. They just had the numbers advantage, and even with the teleport from Larson, it was not enough damage to be able to turn that fight in their favor. They came very close. A lot of summoner spells were used. You can see a number of flashes burn on the side of PSG, but they end up finding that pick. The question is, will they be able to convert it into a tower? Because Han Sama was able to get a number of plates up towards the top side of the map. Inspired has been counter jungling a lot, and this looks like Vanda may have been caught out. I just feel so sorry for the support in this situation. River was lying in wait. Vanda has to use his flash to get away. And nowhere is safe anymore for Rogue. Even their own blue buff is not secure. It has been the weak side of the map for them for a while. As uh, Larson tries to come across to steal this, but River will be able to secure it even without using his smite. Inspired going to do exactly the same thing on the other side of the map. And a bit of a cross map as Unified will secure his, his team, rather, the first tower of the game. Getting closer and closer to that Infinity Edge. Very impressed with what PSG have been showing as Rogue struggling in their games today. They want to try and end the group stage on a high note. Get themselves their second win of the group stages. Of course, the first world's appearance for many of them. And you would imagine that they're going to take this uh, world's experience and kind of grow from this. We've seen many teams do it. We heard amazing talk about Fnatic back in uh, 2017 and the evolution yep. they made in 2018. We've seen it from Damwon as well, the growth they've made from 2019 over towards 2020. And for a lot of young players, the world's experience is extremely valuable. I think it really helps kind of quantify the, the, the gap between you and many of the other top teams internationally. And, but also it gives you a direction and a goal to work towards, which I think is uh, very valuable and inspirational for many teams. I totally agree with that. And I think like you look at it, you've got Finn, Inspired and Larson all at their first world championship. We've seen some good performances, some bad performances, but just playing against high caliber opposition makes you better, right? You learn so much more in a game against people who are really good at the game than you would playing against people who are, say, bronze or silver or whatever, right? So... You call it G2 bronze? You watch some of the games? You watch some of the games, buddy? <laughs> of course. Uh, Rogue. As we rightly said, I look forward to seeing how they develop throughout next year. And just to remind people, this game does not have any stakes in the context of the group. Uh, neither does the one later on the day. So largely, both these teams are playing for pride. And right now, PSG are playing very well. You can see the gold still relatively close on the left. And of course, at the top of your screen, Inspired and Hansom are doing very well. But Finn and Larson very far behind, considering how the two solo lanes have gone. Finn sitting at 0 and 2 right now, has of course hit the level 11 mark. Looks like he's going to work towards the 24 second, and when he gets that, that's where he starts to get very scary, and PSG will struggle to try and manage him as the game progresses. Rogue currently getting in control. Nolting Lullaby is going to come down. River takes a dose of melatonin, pops to sleep, but comes back into the fight. And I'm actually surprised that they're playing around the Rift Herald this much. I would have assumed you'd play around the fact that Dragon is spawning in a minute and you want to stop that third Drake from coming up. Well, the main goal is just to stall PSG, actually. I think that because you can see Finn pushing in the bot lane, the more time they can generate of uh, PSG just kind of dancing around the objective, the more gold that can be funneled to him and they can get an objective. But PSG do the right thing here. They don't waste time going yeah. for that objective. They recognize that Larson's top. They know that Finn is bot, so they can actually generate numbers advantage in mid and take that objective and then answer the rest of the map. So good response from PSG. Rogue, the bright side for them is they are going to get a tower of their own as they take down the tier 2 in top lane. Yeah, a little bit more gold going over to Larson. You can see 5,500 bottom apart from the supports right now, but uh, we'll want to get that Oriana up to where she's doing some DPS. We did see a little bit of an eclectic Oriana build earlier on today, Vedius, with the Ardent Sensor and the Athenes. Again, a possibility here. Expectation is that last I really will be building a lot more I damage. really don't want another support uh, Oriana in the mid lane, especially when you're playing with Senna and Norelia. But you can see both teams setting up for this Drake right now. Larson just gone back to base, spent his gold. The Andre's now completed for Inspired, who's also level 11, and a lot of the gold currently sitting in his back pocket. So this is going to be where we expect a huge fight to take place. Right now, PSG have priority over the river. Inspired's ultimate's not quite back off cooldown yet. Hanabi's up in the top lane trying to get this tower. The dragon has been started up by Rogue. We'll draw attention to the fact there's Mikhail's on the thresh, and here the fight really begins. As Hanabi's going to teleport in, PSG looking for the dragon. Rogue being forced away, and River to try and burst this one down. Ultima comes out from the Aphelios. 
reset on the Dragon, secured by Unified, third of the game for PSG. And Rogue just weren't able to find an engage. It's just awkward for Rogue. They they just kind of got pushed away from the objective because their actual ability to team fight is not that strong. They don't have a way to actually start the fight off. We talked Set about this in the draft. In the draft. Yeah. Like, they can mitigate Hanabi's ability to engage, but outside of that, there's no real way outside of like a good flank, which they were completely denied. So of course, PSG, after taking the Drake and then moving into mid lane, they have easy access to this tier three and kind of Rogue is being run around the map right now. They really are. Finn is going to get a tier one in the bottom lane in exchange for the tier two in mid. It's a 3,000 gold lead for PSG and they are looking to end their world's run on a uh, two game undefeated streak here, Rogue. Obviously struggled today and uh, continue to struggle in this game because, as you said, they don't really have engage options. They don't really have a fed carry right now. Finn has had some gold funneled into him, but PSG are taking everything off the map and with the swell seed going wide, River, oh, dashes forward, gets back out. Losing Lullaby is going to make him go to sleep for a second, but I was going to draw attention to it. Kaiwing has Mikhail's, so if you're only hitting that sleep onto one target, it's very easy for the Thresh to get him out. So it only gets harder now for Rogue to actually start fights. Meanwhile, PSG, I think that their team fight comp is only going to continue to get stronger. The biggest thing that PSG have to be worried about is Han Summer. Of course, not entirely sure how many stacks he's on just yet, but I would imagine he's nowhere near that a late game threat that PSG have to be so terrified of. Meanwhile, the other thing is PSG, of course, with the Aphelios, they're going to sit there and be like, well, if you have all these champions trying to close the gap on me, that only makes my life easier. Yep. And I'm only going to continue to scale extremely well. Meanwhile, the Syndra, there are so many squishy targets on the side of Rogue. Look, notice that Finn has even built himself armor boots to try and mitigate some of the damage that's likely going to come out from Unified because that will be his target. But that leaves him open to potential CC. Of course, usually in the runes, you run a lot of tenacity to try and mitigate some of that. But either way, Finn, it's going to be a difficult fight for him as now he's looking for a kill on the Hanabi. Teleport coming in, Vanguard's Edge is going to connect. The call to the Forge God comes out, but Hanabi, I'm not sure who you're praying to right now as Rogue try and collapse in the bottom lane. Hanabi's dead, River tried to join the fray, but couldn't get in there in time. So Rogue will finally find a pick. That kill will go down to Finn, and this is definitely a bit of relief on the side of Rogue as they look for an engage, but good sidestep from Kaiwing. Disengages, now he looks for the hook. And misses it just across the wall. So if that had connected, you can see the Unleashed Power. Moonlight Vigil follow-up is always available for PSG. And now Unified with the Runan's Infinity Edge complete is well and truly a monster. A uh, gasoline gun of damage to the Aphelios as soon as you get those two items. And especially if you have the right gun setup, you look for things like Crescendum Severum when it comes to taking objectives, looks for things like Infernum Calibrum when it comes to taking fights. I mean, Crescendum, the Shakrams, is always going to be powerful against Rogue's team because you've said it a few times, Phidias. You have to go in. The sleep's going to land here onto River, though. Kaiwing looking for the hook. Flash away, but there's the stun with the concussive blows. The last embrace going to come out as well, and the shutdown goes over the River. A little bit too greedy as he stepped into the rogue jungle. That could have been a huge problem for PSG. Oh, Unified it still flash. will be. Finn is here. I don't know if Finn knew that Unified was in there. Flash away from the flawless duet. It's another summoner burnt on PSG. Very good damage coming out from Unified. You can see the two items completed. This is really where the Aphelios starts to get a lot stronger, but they do force both summoner spells out from Unified, which is going to make Finn's life a little bit easier. But coming back to that play from River, a little bit greedy, trying to take that red buff solo. He recognized that Thresh was in the area and would be able to drive him to safety, but with Braum there to help apply those concussive blows, it set up the stun that allowed Rogue to actually get that pick. So now they've been able to close the goal gap a little bit. They've been able to alleviate some of the pressure that PSG was putting down, but there's still this Drake coming up, and I'm concerned with how Rogue's actually going to be able to start these fights. We've already talked so much about it. This is what you got to do. you just got to try and force Hanabi low. you got to try and take these one-on-one -on -one trades, but River is having none of it. He comes in. Oh, um, that's not it. Jetlag. We'll blame it on Jetlag. Florida Stewart comes out. Finn trading onto Hanabi again. Dives out. Yeah, that's, that's not it. So, Finn did a very cool thing there, uh, for all you Aurelia enthusiasts out there. You want to stack your passive as quickly as possible. So what he did was he queued to a minion, queued onto Hanabi. After he queued onto Hanabi, after landing the stun, he actually queued back to a minion, and then he queued onto Hanabi again. That fully procced his passive, which then really is where all the damage comes out from. That's how you synergize the Blade of the Ruined King with the passive, and he fully stacked that extremely fast, and then he was able to keep yep. going on for the extended trade. Of course, we saw him take half his HP, and if he'd been given the opportunity to commit, then he would have gone for the kill, but of course, River shows up. 
River there. Hunnaby was unable to hit the call of the Forge God. Vithold used him in the mid lane. There's no towers for a long way. He's on a mighty trek. A marathon for the Herald herself, as uh, she will get taken out immediately. Aurelia, though, has started up the Dragon. PSG fighting instead over the top side of the river. And again, control over the Baron buff, but... Well, I actually think they're trying to contest this mid wave, and they're just kind of stuck in an awkward spot, as Rogue is sort of zoning them away, and they never actually had an opportunity, so... A lot of props needs to go to Finn there because his duel and skirmish in the bot lane forcing Hanabi to reset, giving him control over the bot side and giving Rogue the opportunity to get all this deep vision actually enable them to sneak that one away and they didn't have to go for that dangerous fight. Which means that Rogue now, with the gold pretty much dead even and that mountain Drake soul still very far away, yep. Rogue have a good opportunity to kind of regain some control over this game. As you say, only about 200 gold between the two teams and Let's have a look at where we are in terms of items on the Rogue side. Leandri's complete alongside the Runic Echoes for Inspired, Blade of the Ruin King, and the Black Cleaver for Finn. Actually looks like he's going for a Wit's End third here on the Aurelia, having a Negatron, uh, Negatron Cloak in his inventory. And there's two items on Han Samo as well. That Black Cleaver will get stacked up incredibly quickly through a center. You can get six stacks in an auto Q auto combination. And the Mane Mune on its way to being fully equipped as a Mura Mana. Rogue now pushing in mid. They can't really threaten this mid tier one. They're going to send Finn back to bot lane, but he doesn't have teleport, so he's got to be careful. The same can be said for Larson. Hanabi does have his up and available, though. The problem for PSG is there's no real objective for them to play for. Instead, they're going to gain control in terms of vision around this objective. Will they spot this ward out, though? It's in a very awkward spot. So I actually think the control ward they have in the pit is the one that's misplaced because it should be further out towards the uh, towards the center of the buff. Oh, good spot there, mate. Spot it out. Uh, they do clear it. Uh, yeah, I believe they swept it away there as River uses oracles. Hook's going to go wide from Kaiwing just by a tad. Now Rogue can push in once again. That was one of those hooks where he's showing respect to his opponent and saying, oh, Han Sama's good enough that he'll see this and react to it, yeah. and then he's going to walk into it. And then Han Sama is just like, yeah. yeah that's, why, that's why I miss all my hooks. I yeah. assume my opponents are better than they yeah, are. That makes that's sense. the issue, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the same problem for me. It's why I miss all my skill shots. You, you know, don't I have any. You play Nocturne. Uh, true. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on. Um, gold, very even between the two teams. <laughs> so close. Uh, still a very tense game. Three to three on the kill board. We're still kind of waiting for that big team fight, which PSG quickly ramping and scaling up towards. Two of the big, heavy-hitting AP items have now been completed for Tank. Unified working towards his third, and a PSG only continuing to get scarier. And I want to come back to something you mentioned a lot in Draft Betty, is the, the ability to start a fight, or the ability to engage a fight. Like, what we wanted from Rogue in their, in their support position was someone with a little bit more hard engage. He talks about the Leona, which was banned away, or the Nautilus. We have the Braum here, and the rest of Rogue don't really seem to have the tools to dive in to the enemy team, whereas PSG have everything at their disposal to try and get onto the enemy back. Correct. Um, and this is why it's going to be so hard for Rogue, even if they want to fight, even if they feel strong, it's going to be so difficult. And uh, I think that they're actually still waiting for a couple more items to be completed before they're even confident in going for that five versus five. You'll notice that Larson's sitting on a lot of components right now. Finn very close to completing the wit's end. He's only really sitting on one armor item as well, which means that when he does dive onto Unified, Unified is going to melt it unless there's good follow-up. Now, of course, the bright side is Irelia is going to try and dive on top and then the Shockwave to follow. PSG are actually poised and ready to fight. The Molten Edge upgrade has come for Unified. River, Kaiwing, Unified, all sitting on the Thankful Clans. See Vander already caught out. He's going to put up the Unbreakable. Dawning Shadow used as well. There's the knocker from the call of the Forge God. Tank, look at the flank position as Hanabi dives in onto Vander. Vander's still alive somehow, but here goes Tank. Unleash power straight into the face of Finn, and Tank is one, and there's a second. Finn's down. Inspired goes Gordon, but he cannot stop this fight. PSG with four in the mid lane. Beautiful execution from PSG as they just collapse onto Rogue. Those are insanely long death timers, and ooh, Larson trying to get clever here, trying to deny the minion wave to stop them from ending. That might actually just do the trick. Gonna use the shockwave as well, but that just goes to show how one-sided this fight was for PSG. Rogue did not get an opportunity to answer. They could not find the fight that they want, and PSG just tear through the whole line. And all Larson has done, it feels, is delay the inevitable. PSG with a perfect fight in the mid lane. Can't translate it to an inhibitor, but can translate it into a Baron. 27 and a half minutes in, PSG will take the Baron buff. 
will take a 4,000 gold advantage and have 30 seconds to reset for the Mountain Soul. Certainly do, and this is just Braum not trying to face check, but he's the only one that can ward these bushes. Forced to use the shield very early, which then sets up for Hanabi to get the double knockup. Then another double knockup as Tank is coming in from the flank. He flashes in ultis and then lands the stun onto many members, which make it difficult for Rogue to be able to turn this one around. Larson cannot do anything in the fight. And just such a one-sided, well-played fight for PSG. Getting to play their style, executing upon it well. And now, this is kind of Rogue's last opportunity to kind of turn the game back in their favor. If they can get this trade, they can delay a little bit longer. But PSG want to end it now. PSG setting up towards the top side. You can see Finn looking for a flank, but he's on a ward. That blast cone is awarded by PSG. Kaiwing misses the hook. Dragon down to 4,000. Off towards the top side of this fight. Tank is looking for a flank once again. Lots of damage from the Inferno. Moonlight Vigil coming out. Hans Summer was tagged with it, and the Dragon goes down. The mountain secured hit by PSG, and they're still looking for the fight. Hook onto Finn once again. Kaiwing down towards the bottom side is doing so much working. Lanterns in his teammate as well. Finn's going to try and trade onto Unified, but he can't win against the Aphelios. No one has died as of yet, but Rogue have definitely lost this fight. Finn trying to heal up off the Krugs, and PSG are still on the chase. Hanabi has the call of the Forge God. Finn has nowhere to go. He's going to try and TP out the Calibrum. Not there. The Inferno. He gets the kill. Unified will take him. And now Rogue are being collapsed on. The Shockwave does absolutely zilch. And now Vanda will fall. Call of the Forge God eaten up by the shield. But Vanda pays for it with his life. P and PSG secure themselves the Mountain Soul. They're going to TP in. They're looking to continue the chase. And Summer, the Unleashed Power, not enough. But the scattering of the weak. And it's Rogue who are the weak in this game. PSG still have the Baron for a minute, 10 seconds, but yes, they could look to close. They're looking to break into the base, and Rogue have just crumbled. They could not find any good fight, and PSG have only continued to scale up. Excellent execution in every single fight, and Rogue looking to go 0-3 on the day, whereas some redemption as PSG and Rogue close out Worlds 2020. And what a performance it was from PSG. Some may have said their win against JDG was a one-off, was a fluke was a surprise to be sure, but they show in this game against Rogue that it was no mistake. PSG now on the Nexus Towers, the first falls, there's a cannon and a couple of minions to guide in this wave. And the next second Nexus Tower is the target, Hanabi on the front line, you can see the damage coming out, Kaiwing looking for a hook, can't quite find it yet, Finn's gonna dive in, Vivid low, but there is the crescendo from Unified, and you cannot face an Aphelios when he has his Chakrams available, the Shockwave coming out, Unified still heals up, Tank goes on a killing spree, and PSG they're playing with their food just a little bit as Rogue are forced back to the fountain. The Nexus Tower will fall to the cannons. PSG continuing the siege, though, even with low health members. The Nexus is exposed. They're looking to end it here. Moonlight Vigil goes wide, but PSG will have a swung song in this game. The Nexus falls. PSG take down Rogue. A great end for PSG's bittersweet performance here at Worlds. Taking down JDG and Rogue is definitely a great way to end your tournament. Of course, Rogue must be feeling frustrated. 0-3 on the day, only getting one win in what was a very difficult group. And the last time they met, it was a clinic from Rogue. They absolutely dismantled PSG. Yep. But this time around, PSG got to play their style. They got an early advantage. They maintained control and they took their time. They knew that they would be stronger in the team fights and they found some fantastic ones. Beautifully played from the side of PSG. And I think that they can leave feeling at least a little better uh, after what has been a very challenging group. Definitely, especially with all the substitutions they've had to make throughout the course of Worlds. PSG should have their heads held right or a high. And so, in my opinion, should Rogue. Three rookies to the world stage in one of the toughest groups, perhaps the toughest group to make it into the top two. Still put on a good showing. Can come back to Europe with a lot of learnings for next year. That's certainly the case. Uh, obviously, always going to be frustrating yep. uh, ending your tournament on a 0-3 performance, but that is the nature of Worlds. Every team is always going to be a challenge. And, uh, yeah, huge props to um, PSG. They deny JDG that first seed. Imagine if JDG now end up going up against the likes of a top eSports or a Suning. Like, it's, it could all be very difficult for them. So uh, they may have changed the dynamics of this tournament quite a lot. They I mean, definitely could have. But when we return, it's the clash between the two pre-tournament favorites as JDG aim to get their revenge against Damwon. Don't you miss it.